How is everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Um, hope everybody's had a blessed day and um, staying well. I uh, hope you're doing well and staying well. Hope everybody got their Easter challenge thing. Um, let us know if you didn't. Uh, we'll try to get you squared away on that. But um, this week, we've been working on uh, pondering on the week Jesus uh, come into Jerusalem. Uh, and of course, Sunday was a uh, Palm Sunday. And uh, Jesus rode in to Jerusalem on the donkey, uh, you know, in humble in humbleness. The king coming in in peace. And uh, each each day uh, we we we've been digging in and looking into scripture. And uh, <clears throat> Monday made me think about uh, Jesus when he came into the temple, and uh, he got a little upset with people doing the money exchanging thing and overthrew the tables in a righteous manner, taught them that they shouldn't be doing that. But uh, the next following that Tuesday, you know, uh, Mary anointed Jesus' feet with her burial ointment. You know, and uh, today was a was a day that really kind of jumped out at me. It was the day that Judas Iscariot, one of his, his own disciples, um, betrayed Jesus himself. And uh, my thought was, you know, what is Jesus worth to you? You know, you had a man, Judas Iscariot, uh, a chosen one. Jesus Jesus even knew uh, when he picked him, he said, this one is of the devil. Jesus knew that, that, that he was of the devil, but he loved him anyway. And I, I believe that hope in the Lord that he loved us anyway, even though we have some kind of rebellion or uh, something in us that we don't even think that we may not, people may not look at us right. But... The Lord loved us, and he sees more in us than other people do. And he's He's a God of many chances, and, and I, I praise him for that. And I, I think about G, Judas, you know, and, and what he done, and uh, betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. We think of 30 pieces of silver, you know, we think of that, what is the value? What is the value of that considered today? You know, did a little research, and some of those things just... Trying to figure out, you know, what kind of money that pertained to. That run about one hundred eighty-five, maybe two hundred dollars. I'm thinking two hundred dollars could have been more than that. You know, I, I the thing I just don't understand. You know, that was what is Jesus worth to you? To Judas, he wasn't worth a whole lot, and I, I just it's hard to grasp that because I think, man, today Jesus is worth so much so much to me you know knowing that he, he went to the old cross as we're coming in these next couple days you know uh, Judas betrayed him and they took him and, and they whipped Jesus they scourged him they used a, a cat of nine tails it was a big whip with uh, pieces on the end of it they whipped it ripped flesh off his back and chained him that chained him that pillar and he took every bit of it they played that crown of thorns, shoved it down on his head, blood just rolling down his face. You can imagine the pain that Jesus went through. He, he could have called legions of angels to come rescue him, but he didn't because he had you and me in mind. That's a beautiful thing. I, I was thinking about this scripture today, and my question is, what is Jesus worth to you? Let's uh, read Matthew 26. Uh, verses 14 through 16. Uh, it said this here. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto, him, unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they coveted it, which means agreed with him, for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. You know, right there, Judas was just really scheming to what kind of what can you give me? What what would you give me to do this to for me to turn you over to him? You know, what what is he worth? And they offered him 30 pieces of silver, a couple hundred bucks. We think that today's time, you know. I'll give you a certain, maybe even Satan may even come come face to face to you and, and say, hey, 
Now, what would it take for you to turn your back on Jesus? To just forget about this Jesus and now I'll give you fame, I'll give you fortune, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. How many people go for that today? You know, maybe think of the scriptures. What's your soul worth? Matthew 16, 26, it says this. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, that was, that was Judas's thing there. That was his problem. That was his fault. Jesus would have forgiven him. I know he would have. He forgave Peter. Peter denied him three times. But Peter realized what he did. He went back and he sought forgiveness. Jesus forgave him and ended up making him a rock. I mean, he had established the church. That's the love of our God. Sometimes Satan beats us down and think that, think, makes us think that we're not worth nothing. We're worth a lot to the Lord. You're worth so much that Christ went through the pain and the agony this week for you. He loved you so much. Not that God made him go. God didn't make him go. Jesus went on his own. You have that freedom of choice God's giving you. People always said, why would a God send us to hell? God don't want to send us to hell. We have the freedom of choice. We have that opportunity to accept Jesus, to get that ticket out of here. But if you choose not to take that ticket, that free gift of salvation, hell is your home. God doesn't desire you to go to hell. You choose your own way. He loves you that much. He gave you that freedom of choice. I pray today, today, you'll accept Jesus. He's worth so much. And you won't regret it. You think, yeah, there's a lot of value and a lot of worth here in this, and riches in this world. That ain't no comparison to what heaven's going to be like. You think about this. You think of how beautiful this earth was before man corrupted it. And the beauty and the splendor. What is heaven going to be like? For God to have his own children there with him. But with Jesus Christ that paid the price for our sin. How beautiful heaven is going to be. One day. One day we'll step out there. In this temporal, temporal place, you know, it makes me think, what, what do you want to gain from this temporal place? All the money you can get? All the status you can get? Or the gain you can get? Or all the pleasure you can get? Jesus tells us of a, of a parable of a, about a beggar and a rich man over in Luke 16. The rich man didn't want anything to do with the beggar until he woke up in hell. Then things were different. Don't waste. Don't gamble with this, this world here. Reach out for the Lord today. Don't focus on things that are, that are coming our way uh, that you're longing for. Look for Jesus today. He's the source of everything. He's the one that gives you the peace. He's the one that gives you the joy. He's the one that gives you the comfort. He's the one that gives you the worth. You want to feel like you're worth something, have Jesus in your life. If not, that was just going to beat you down and beat you down and beat you down. He's like a big bully. And you're on the losing side. I'd rather be on the winning side. That's Jesus. God bless you. And I hope today this message found you in a place where you may even want to come to know Jesus. I'd like to do a prayer. And if you don't, if you don't know who Jesus is, I, I pray today will be the day. And it don't have to be complicated. Uh, it'll be the best choice you ever make. 
in your own life. Just pray along with me, all right? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day you blessed us with, Father God. Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's anyone out there that don't know who Jesus Christ is and the price that he paid for us on that old rugged cross, he bled and he died for the whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. I pray that person, Lord, if that person's out there that don't know what Jesus did for them, that they'll come to know the truth today and that they'll reach out in a simple manner, childlike faith, and just say, I, I need you, Jesus. I need you. Lord, that was the prayer I prayed when I first come to know you, Lord. I just, I didn't know how to do this, but I need you. I gave my whole heart, and I was sincere as I could be. And I kept saying I was sorry for what I'd done. I love you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for your saving power. And I pray, Lord, if there's a soul out there that don't know you, just maybe just don't understand, or maybe they don't even think they can be forgiven. Maybe they feel like they ain't, they've done too much or they can't be forgiven. Don't let the lies keep you from that. Lord, I just pray you help them understand. Lord, reach out to them and love on them. Let them know you love them. Thank you for John 3, 16, Lord, that always remind us. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life, that eternal life with Jesus. What a beautiful thing. We're not promised the next breath, Lord, and I understand that. I always pray that we'll be ready for you when you do come. For all this in the wonderful name of Jesus, Father.